Good morning, good afternoon, good evening for another special edition of Wowza Live. And we're coming to you from Hawaii. Mike and Mackenzie, welcome. Hey, nice to be here. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, and what, what part of Oahu are you on at right now? Right now, we're in Kaneohe, where uh, our home is and has been for the last 15 years. Got it. Got, and the weather? Uh, today's beautiful. <laughs> okay. And what about the lockdown situation over there? Uh, the what lockdown is situation is fluid and um, until recently lacked transparency. Uh, the most recent uh, talk is that they're going to open to out-of-state visitors. And if an out-of-state visitor takes a test, I forget the time frame involved, but if they take a test, and it's negative, they do not have to be quarantined when they get here. And of course, that would be huge for people not having to sit in a hotel room for 14 days and yeah. waste their money. Yeah. So right now, out-of-state visitors are barred from flying into Hawaii. No, no. They, they, they can go, but they're quarantined. Unless they are here for less than 14 days. Okay, got it. If that's if their trip ends. So for me, I'm here. Um, I only flew in Thursday afternoon and I'm flying out Sunday night. I have to remain quarantined the whole time I'm here. Wow. And, yeah. and do you, are you quarantined in? Do you have an anklet on you or no. is it voluntary? No, they, uh, it's, they leave it up to the visitors' uh, honesty and cooperation. Um, they did call our house phone yesterday to make sure I was here. Wow. Yeah. 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 All right. Now, Mike, many, many years ago, you flew from Ohio, the state of Ohio, to Hawaii. What brought you there in the first place? That was back right after I graduated from Moorhead State University. Um, I had discovered at the very last minute teaching wasn't necessarily in my short-term career. Uh, I had a close friend in high school named Jeff Leischer, uh, who swam for Stanford and they used to come out here for their Christmas training and we went elsewhere from, uh, Moorhead. So graduating without getting into a career. I uh, actually came out here to visit him in 1976. I actually hitchhiked from Cincinnati to the West Coast. Oh, wow. And flew from the West Coast to Hawaii. W was that in the plan or you just were short on cash? Um, all the above. <laughs> <laughs> you could do some serious planning when you're short on cash. <laughs> <laughs> And so you, you fly from the West Coast to Honolulu, I assume. Yeah. And what was your first impression? Um, that I was home, honestly. Really? Yeah, I was walking through the airport, going to catch the bus, go out to Makaha, where Jeff and, and his friend lived. And uh, I'll never forget, I had worn a very heavy parka hitchhiking across the country in December. And when I was walking from the gate to go to the bus, I took the parka off and threw it in a garbage can. Wow. <laughs> wow. Some things you never forget, that's one of them. Yeah, and that was 1976. 76, yes. 76. Now, in 1979, you did a pretty remarkable swim for that time period. What was that? That was the Kaibi Channel. Yes. With, uh, with Ian Emerson, and uh, uh, we had met uh, earlier, and he and a bunch of guys were putting together this wild, wacky race with a start off swim and then a bike and then a run. And Ian asked me to do that with them. And of course, I showed my lack of vision because I said that that's never going to go anywhere. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yes, and the Iron Man was born. <laughs> That's a do-over I wish I had back. Yeah. Now, now Ian did participate in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he, was, he was right there on the ground floor when they actually came up with the concept. He was one of the first 12. Yes. Uh, so, so now, somehow you and him got in the ocean, you're training, and, and you, wanted to do, you wanted to cross from the island of Molokai to the island of Oahu. And how long did that take? What was the planning there? Um, at the time, if, if correct me if I'm wrong, only Harry Huffaker and Kiel Nakama had actually completed the channel. 
And Jonathan Ezer. And Jonathan Ezer, got it. Right. Got it. Um, Ian had tried a couple times, came up short. He was very frustrated. And uh, so we were just talking down at Alamoana one day, and I said, sure, we'll give it a go. And we trained for about three to four months um, and then waited for the right conditions, and they happened, and we did it. Now, three to four months <laughs> for a, a 26-odd mile swim, that's... That's not too much training. Well, <laughs> at the time I was, I was in less than a career and I just worked if I wanted to work. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Living on Baco sandwiches. So, you know, swimming dominated and it was something that we both got pretty fired up for and uh, then focused on our training. Yeah. So you go over to Molokai, you, what time did you set off? What time of the uh, 2 a.m. from Lao Point. Yeah. 2 a.m. So you swim, and if I remember correctly, you're swimming in place for a while. Yes. Um, we actually didn't go a mile in four hours. And nobody – now, of course, this is 2 a.m., so you, at 6 a.m. When the, when the sun is starting to rise and you look behind you, the I was just right there. mortified. Oh. Just mortified. Is, and, and then I, what did I, you do? Like, did we pass an island? <laughs> 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 it was, uh, it was, you know, and, but Ian just said, you know, we're going to get out of this. And we did. And then we made up some pretty good time. Yeah. Great. Great. Now dial forward a few decades. And now your daughter, Mackenzie, is planning or wanting to do the same thing. How, what was your sort of your fatherly paternal advice and guidance there. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mike, you have the simplest rules, internal guidelines that I know of any channel swimmer. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you repeat that for the audience? Yeah, that falls into one of the questions about mental, mental preparedness. <laughs> and that is that uh, every channel swimmer that starts and completes a swim has only walked into the water, swam across, and walked out. Yeah. That's a channel swim. Yeah, yeah, great. So everything else is noise and distractions to get, to get us off message so many times. Wow, excellent, excellent. So going back to Mackenzie, she comes to you and says, Dad, I wanna do this. And you say, go ahead, but you got to give her more advice than that. Did you, did you jump in there and train with her? Um, no, no, no. She, she was, she was pretty set on her ways of doing it herself. Cause the year before, yeah, the year before had been uh, our attempt uh, at England, English channel together. Mm -hmm. So I believe you were the one he I, I finished. She came up a little short and then decided that, something needed to be done. Got it. And I believe that's where you got your initiative. Well, you were the one who said, well, if you're gonna come back and do this, don't let all your training go to waste. Why don't you try Molokai next year? And I'm like, okay. And I just kind of maintained that and picked up training again later the following year in 2009. Got it. And how were your conditions, Mackenzie? I had, I think, perfect conditions with my swims. I had no wind or current against me until the very end. I had rolling waves pushing me the whole way. Um, I mean, you were out on the boat the whole time, so I don't know yeah. how the outside was, but all I know is I didn't have any problems until the current changed at the very end. And it took me about two hours to do the last quarter of a mile wow. mm -hmm. because yeah. the current pushed um parallel with the with shore so i had to fight through that did you both land in in sandy beach uh i ended up or ian and i i'm sorry ended up at allen davis park which is okay. a little bit to the right yeah. if you're looking towards sandy beach it's to the right yeah. um i think you walked out right i at walked the out at sandy body surfing beach, yeah right there yeah, and and Mackenzie, I remember seeing pictures of your finish. I mean, the waves were huge. 
the waves were massive and I was so annoyed that I had to keep wading in the water to, to get out because I couldn't just walk right out and a bunch of surfers and bodyboarders in the lineup were telling me, wait, 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 wait for this set to go. And then they'd be like, okay, go, go, go. So then I would, I body surfed a wave in. Oh, wow. <laughs> I finished. Now, now I, I can see this picture. You, you're a body surfer, you're a board surfer on Sandy Beach, and you see this young lady <laughs> swimming from Molokai. I mean, they just assumed that you just swam Molokai or what? They, they were just kind of like, what is this chick doing? Just swimming with her cap and goggles in the surf. Like they were like, where did she come from? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Mike, were you ever nervous when she was out there? No, no, no. I, yeah. um, no, I can't say that I was. Oh, wonderful. No. It, no. What were your times comparatively? I see a big smile on Mackenzie's face. I, was, I forget Years. my Molokai. 16, 10. 16, 10. Got it. And she was 14, 42. Yeah. I didn't have the push. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Plus that, you know what, nutrition wise, Ian and I, <laughs> yogurt and canned peaches. Okay. For, for 16, 16 hours. 16 hours. <laughs> After that swim, when was the next time you had canned peaches? <laughs> I can't even, I don't even know I've had them since. <laughs> yeah. now, now, Mike's uh, philosophy, walk in, swim across, get out. Mackenzie, do you have the same philosophy? Is it a little yep. same? Same. Got it. Got it. It's the only goal. You're going to cross a channel. Those are your only goals. Yeah. And uh, maybe not in order of the interview, but uh, in, in acknowledging her for her most recent Catalina swim, um, I, she was possessed. Yeah. I've, not, I've not seen her focused like that ever before. Yeah. And it was, she was, nothing was gonna stop her. And I keep using the word possessed because that was, that was awesome swim. Yeah, yes, yeah. so I was there at the finish. That was, that was great, you looked strong. Thank goodness you were there, yes. <laughs> we'll leave that for another day, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure Steve has been ever been with a Miller swim where there wasn't a conflict at the end. <laughs> well, yeah, now, talking about conflict, boy, your swim in the Ederly swim. Yeah. New York to New Jersey. That, Mike, you, you, you were tough there. You were really tough. And could you, can you paint the picture of that, that year and that swim? Yeah, it was, um, I, I'd gone early to uh, practice in the water off the Jersey shore. I, the Ederly swim ended up way colder than we had planned. Yeah. Anyway, so I did do some training for whatever the temperature was going to be. And then the swim got delayed. Yeah. And it was like a week and a half. And, you know, the water can change temperature in a day, let alone a, a week and a half. So when race day came along and they said the water was like 53, yeah. I knew I was in for a real, a real tough uh, tussle with Mother Nature because I had never even approached water that was 53 degrees. Yeah. I, I was on your boat. I, I don't know how you did it, but you just... <laughs> You just continued, and you, yeah. I mean, it was like a wind-up doll, and you walked in, <laughs> you swam across, and you walked out. Walked out, that's it. Boy, but you, you were shivering. You were, you were really, really shivering. Yeah, and, and talking was a struggle, too. Yeah. Right after the swim. So, yeah, I knew it was probably a, a little bit of a reach, but I also knew you were on board, so. Yeah, well, I saw you. Your expertise. And we were talking, you know, during the feedings, it was, it was, you, you were cognitively there. Yeah. Uh, yep. You were shivering, but you were cognitively there. And you kept on saying, you know, how much longer? And I kept on saying uh, a little more <laughs> <laughs> many, many times. Yeah. But yeah. That was, uh, that was that your coldest and hardest swim, do you think? Or do you had that? Oh, other yeah, time? ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because when, and when we were training for England at Aquatic Park, it wasn't 53, it was like 55 or 56. And you, you 
recognized that little bit of a difference. And then of course, England was, I think I was in 62 to 63 degree water. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So that early in 2010 was, uh, was a tough one. Yeah. Uh, now, Mike, you talked about Aquatic Park, but you live on Oahu heading yeah. toward uh, England. So can you explain where Aquatic Park played in your, uh, in your planning? Well, yeah, a couple things um, comes together is, first of all, uh, the nature of the business I'm in allows me to work remotely. So I knew I could get away for some cold water, okay? So I found a place, a VRBO, up in the hill of uh, close to the University of San Francisco. And uh, Mackenzie and I were together there for two, two, two weeks, and two I, weeks. And I was on summer vacation from yeah. school, so. Yeah, so Aquatic Park was a short drive and it was perfect for um, training. And the folks at the Dolphin Club were just as warm as can be. And they have that million dollar shower that everybody talks about. At a, at first. So Aquatic Park was a perfect place to train. Yeah. And Mackenzie had it. You had, had to qualify. Yeah. Oh, oh, you did your qualifying swim there. Yeah. Yeah. We both yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you just circle around Aquatic Park? Yeah. or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you remember how many times that was? No, no, too many. Way too many. And I just remember that this is kind of like Alamona Park. Except colder. Except colder and one third as big. One third is long. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm glad you brought up the Alamona Park. For people, visitors who go to Hawaii and they are um, ocean swimmers, where are some really nice places that they should check out while they're on vacation on Hawaii? For swimming or for just swimming, in general? For swimming. For swimming. For, for uh, people swimming. wanting to swim, call it open water, yeah. Yeah. This, the, I'm, I'm sure the safest and most, what's the word? Re, um, forget the safest and uh, most dependable place Got is it. Ala Moana. Absolutely. Got um, it. Parking's good. Uh -huh. It's central. It, you can measure your distance. And there is a space, a special place for swimming where you don't have to come into contact with other types of sports, um, surfers and things like that. Outside of that, um, I'm a fan of Kailua Beach where I've swam almost all of my training. And Mackenzie did too. I did my I did a seven hour there training. training for Molokai. Yeah. Just oh. back and forth down the buoys. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And it's, so Kailua Beach is a great place yeah. to swim too. Now, Mike, when you're at Kailua Beach, you often uh, are seen swimming along the surface, and then all of a sudden we don't see you because you're somehow diving under the surface of the water. <laughs> what are you diving for? Um <clears throat> Well, a, a very, it's, there's so many tourists and visitors that come here and they want to go to Kailua Beach and they want to kayak out to um, Flat Island or the Mimokes. So anyway, I think the recurring thing is um, people go to Island Snow and buy expensive sunglasses and then they go rent a kayak and then they go kayak out to Flat Island they tip over and I'm there to get all the goodies. <laughs> Besides fishing weights, uh, dozens of pairs of highly expensive sunglasses, snorkels, masks, fins. Wow. And, and the fishing weights have really um, paid off this time because with my lockdown, I have my COVID uh, weight bar. This, this here is filled with my fishing weights and this is what I do my late weightlifting with. Wow. It all comes around. Full it circle. all comes around. Karma is cool. Yeah. Now, Mike, uh, the one place that I thought you were going to say that people can swim is Waikiki Beach. Yeah. But you actually had an incident in uh, the 1980s with uh, yeah. another good yeah. swimming friend, Jimmy Dean. Can uh -huh. you explain what, what happened there? Yeah, we were, um, we had uh, pushed off from the Outrigger Canoe Club. Um, this was in 87, I think it was December. Anyway, went out for a swim and found a couple of uh, tour boats that were moored right off the Waikiki or the Kapahulu groin. Got it. And um, we, the, the boats were moored and Jimmy and I were just, well, let's go swim and say hi to these people, right? So we were swimming right between the moored boats 
and I just remember hearing this whiny sound underwater, which I knew was a, a boat or a prop of a boat. Yeah. And uh, before I knew it, it was getting really loud and I never did see the boat, but right at the last minute, I thought this is a boat, it's got a prop. So I dropped my head down um, for protection. And when I dropped my head down, my feet came up like you would expect. Mm -hmm. And the prop uh, came in contact with both my feet oh. and with Jimmy's left arm and shoulder. Oh my God. So it was a, it was a pretty nasty wreck or a pretty nasty accident. Um, however, I could still, I, I didn't have any uh, injuries to my upper torso. Uh -huh. So I could manage uh, 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 helping Jimmy and wave another boat down to, uh, to come render aid because the boats we were swimming between were so big, there was not much they could do. So anyway, they came down there and uh, we ended up in the hospital and just Jimmy's uh, left arm is still <clears throat> not functioning. And, uh, but after going through some physical therapy, a little bit of PTSD therapy, you know, I'm basically back to normal and was so within a couple of years. Oh, wow. Wow. So I'm sorry to hear that. But, um, but so outside of Oahu, uh, again, someone is coming to Hawaii. Are, do you have some favorite, uh, swimming spots on Maui, Kauai, the big yeah. island? On, uh, on Maui, <clears throat> I like to, and again, whether I'm alone or with uh, folks where I want to get in some distance, getting in by the Sheraton or what, I forget what hotel it is now, but Black Rock. Okay. And swimming parallel to Kaanapali Beach. You know, it's eight, 10, 12 feet of water. It's crystal clear. That's a great place on Maui. Yeah. And I love to swim in Kona, get in by the, the pier where the Ironman starts, yeah. swim down to the Hilton, swim back. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And McKinsey, during all your swims, you must have seen all kinds of beautiful marine life. Yeah, with uh, especially just training in Kailua. I mean, uh, when we go swim Kailua Beach, we do the buoys and we'll swim out and around Flat Island. And sometimes uh, we've swam out to the Mokes, Mokaluas, which are right off of Lanikai Beach. Um, I mean, countless, countless Honu, which are turtles, uh, fish and on my training swims I've also got gotten my fair share of uh, snorkels and masks and <laughs> if I see a fishing weight I would go down and get it too and show my dad look at what I got <laughs> what about jellyfish did, oh, uh, did visitors I forgot about those um, when I was swimming I think we were training for, we were training for uh, Lanai to Maui and I was either 13 or 16. I can't remember which one it was. And I had a monster Portuguese man of war get me from my face down the side of my body wrapped around my butt down my legs. Oh. And that itched for about three or three weeks. I could not stop itching it. And it was pretty welty wow. um, finishing Molokai I got blasted by jellyfish all over my um, face and body for that as well so at the end, at the end yep okay. at the very end I not only did I have to deal with the tide change pushing me and I wasn't moving but all those jellyfish were hitting me so that was yeah not the best God. and what gets spun out of that is walk in swim, swim across, across walk out, out. <laughs> Everything else is just a distraction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another spot for swimming too, um, North Shore in the summertime. Oh, yeah. When no. it's a lake. Oh. Yeah, the North Shore Swim Series. I mean, I did that all throughout growing up. And that's lots of beautiful fish and turtles yeah. and marine Everything. life as well. Yeah. Now, Mike, you've, you've crossed the uh, Maui Channel, certainly on relays. Mm -hmm. you and I've done that a few times. Can you explain that? the Maui channel to people who've never been out there? On a relay or solo? Or, or relay or solo. Solo, yeah. Um, well, that's a, chalk this one up to Ian too. I think he's probably one of the most under noticed 
people out here for what he's done to ocean swimming. Um, uh, the Maui Channel started in the 70s and still going on, but it is, a, it's the, per, you know, it has to be the perfect introductory swim yeah. to channel swimming that yes. there is. Um, warm water, clear water, sure. typically uh, uh, trade wind uh, is not an issue. And like we all know, it's about eight miles. Yeah. And um, so it's a, it's a really good uh, starter. Yeah. I, I know when I went to Hawaii for the first time, I actually walk, I, I literally just got off the plane and uh, I wanted to go for a swim and I found my way to Kaimana Beach, the start of the Waikiki Rough Water Swim. And I saw these people swinging their arms and I figured nobody swings their arm and wears goggles unless they're an experienced swimmer. So uh, I, I think it was you and Doug Rice and, and Laurel, yeah, uh, Laurel, your wife, uh -huh. And uh, I didn't want, I, again, I didn't know anybody. So I just saw these swimmers swinging their arms and doing this sort of, you know, back and forth, uh, uh, master st swimmer stretch, as I call it. And then yeah. you got in and you all were swimming quite well. And I go, oh my gosh, I gotta, I gotta get to know these people. <laughs> I threw off all my clothes, got my goggles. I don't know, you know, and I just took off swimming. I had no idea where you guys were going. I had no idea, you know, uh, who you were. And I just remember swimming up alongside you and, and you sort of all looked at me and we got to know each other quite well. And that was uh, 85, I believe. 84 or 85. Uh, yeah. And of course, you know, what we remember of that is how fast he caught us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it took me so long to reach you. I started a half an hour ago. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that, the rest of the swim too. Yeah, and that course is a great one, which uh, locals call the double rough water. Yeah, starting right at the by the uh, Outrigger Canoe Club at the yep. at the foot of uh, Diamond Head, and you sort of swim the the length of Waikiki Bay, and then you come back, and that's always a beautiful one. Yeah, it's um, the double rough water is. It, one, one of the things it's really noted for, though, is how tough it is on the escorts, the pi kayak paddlers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's in de it's you it used to be in December. They've changed it now around the marathon. But in December, we don't have the best weather out here. So it would not be unusual to have 20 to 25 mile an hour trades. And while we have a little wave action to deal with, they're taking it a brunt force on the way back. Yeah. So it's a really tough swim for the kayakers or uh, escorts. yeah, escorts. Yeah. And it, McKenzie, you were born and raised in, on uh, Oahu and, and Mike, you were the, their adopted son. Um, when you, when you tell people back home, or at least Mike, when you tell your, your college mates and your high school buddies about Hawaii, like, how do you, how do you describe Hawaii to them? Hmm. Um, I mean, does paradise come to mind? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, well, the first thing I guess I've caught myself doing is saying it's nothing like Florida because most of the Midwest and in, in that group, you know, Florida is uh, a 10 hour drive Got it. or an hour flight yeah. and it's warm. Yeah. And it's hot and there's beaches. Um, and we're not anything like that, of course, out here. Yeah. And, uh, so paradise comes to mind. Um, I think laid back is a. There's a there's way. some laid back, yeah. That uh, I'm trying to live it right now with my new ponytail. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> anyway, can you um, turn around and show us for? Uh, is that right. There's, there's Mike Miller, triple crown swimmer with a ponytail. COVID tail. COVID Nothing. tail. Yeah. COVID tail. Yeah. Good place to be. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, thank you very much for this uh, great reminiscing of, of everything. And, and Mackenzie, um, good luck or congratulations on your marriage. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, not good luck. That was the wrong word. <laughs> I was no, gonna say good, good luck, luck on, on your wedding. channel swim. <laughs> good luck is on the wedding is def is accurate though. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're all over this place with the uncertainty, of course. Yeah. yeah. So, but. Uh, they're okay. they're prepared to run out on the beach, get married, and have a party at the house if that's the best we can do. Yep. Yeah.
Got it. Well, yeah. thank you okay. very much again. And, and all right. Catch you around. Right. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Bye.